Good evening and welcome to the Los Angeles Film School. Uh, we are here in week three of digital literacy, and we are going to be talking today about the digital self uh, and how to examine your personal and professional values. We're also going to talk about how you guys can establish a home base for yourselves and start curating your personal brand. And I'm going to be approaching this topic today from the vantage point of someone who maybe doesn't use social media much. They've never used it before. This isn't, this isn't going to be talking to you guys who all um, have a professional background with your brand, or you've already got a brand that's maintained that, that you're using currently. This is for those folks that are starting out for the first time. So we're going to hit some very, very basic concepts, um, personal branding, um, the digital footprint, just making sure that your presence is in the online space is a whole lecture by itself. So we're going to be kind of jumping through a lot of big ideas tonight. And if there are any discussion points that you guys want me to elaborate on, you can uh, throw that in chat. We're also going to be talking about the week three module and the activities that we're going to be working on this week. So Shantae, if you're a brand designer, a lot of this stuff tonight we're going to talk about is very familiar. It's going to be very familiar to you. And if you're working with me this month, my name is Justin. You can reach out to me via phone, um, email, class message, text. I'm here for you guys. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm always supporting your success throughout our time together here in digital literacy. So let's talk a little bit about the digital self, both your personal and professional values. So the first question that I'm gonna ask you guys, and this is a completely rhetorical question, you don't need the answer, you don't probably already have an answer, but the question is, who are you? Who are you? Seems like a basic question, and this isn't about who you are as a person, um, just as a person, it's also about who you are as a professional, who you are as a student, where you want to see yourself. So your answer to this question in the third week of digital literacy is going to be very different from the, the answer to this question four months from now. Think about eight months from now, a year from now. Are you going to be the same person you, you are that you are today a year from now? Probably not. You're going to be learning. You're going to be experiencing new hardware, new software different instructors, you're going to be talking to your classmates, you're going to be building projects, you're going to be reaching out into your industry to see who knows what and how much you can learn from them, right? I can tell you right now, when I first started my uh, associate's degree in 2005, I graduated in 2006, and it was a complete 180. When I first started, I knew nothing. The barest essentials, I was an artist, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to get there. I go through school, I come out the under end, and I'm like, there's like, it's interesting because you look back and you understand how far you came. You're like, well, I'm no longer that same person. I might be wearing the same body, but my skills are different. I have a different outlook of the world. I have a greater perspective, a more broad perspective of what I can accomplish, what I can do and what my skills and um, what I can bring to the table, right? So who you are today is gonna be very different from who you are a year into your degree. And then at the very end of your degree, when you're getting ready to graduate, you're going to be like a completely different human being. Like if you were to time travel back to your past self, I doubt they would even recognize you. You would just carry yourself differently. You would be speaking a different language. You would be a consummate professional. Whereas some of you at this point are just learning. You're getting your feet wet. You're learning the ropes. Uh, who you are two years from now is going to be a completely different person. So keep asking yourself this question. If you're not satisfied with the answer, think about what you can do to change that. And expressing yourself effectively in the online space is crucial to your future in the industry. So knowing how to answer this question in an entertaining way for people that don't know you is going to be very important for you guys to establish yourself in your chosen industry. So you have to think about your definition too. So first, who are you? And then what's your definition of yourself as a professional? Where do you see yourself now? Where do you see yourself later on, a year or two from now, five years from now? Or if you want to be more short term, six or seven months from now, what do you want to be doing? What do you want to be learning? What kind of um, projects do you want to be working on? And making the decision to be a career professional in the modern age is gonna require a new approach to how you define yourself in the online space. So not only how you define yourself as a person and as a professional, but how do other people see how you define yourself and how do they perceive and interact with that version of you that you are putting out into the world, right? So you have to define your values, you have to think about what they are, and then stick with it. But this isn't something that is going to be set in stone. The values that you define for yourself on day one or week three of digital literacy, those are going to break and they're going to fracture and they're going to be moved around and shuffled 
and maybe locked into different places because you're going to grow, you're going to learn new skills, and you're going to see your overall skill set in a different light as you get more experience, right? So your digital self is going to be informed by your personal values and beliefs. So when you're thinking about your personal values, and I don't want to qualify this with any specific personal values, but uh, Anthony, Atticus, Anissia, Diana, Evan, everybody in here, you all have certain things about you that makes you you, the things that you believe in, how you were raised, uh, maybe your spirituality, maybe you've got a personal code that you live by that is something that you made for yourself. Or maybe you take after your parents completely, like you're just the complete doppelganger of them. Like you, they raise you a certain way, you live that certain way, and it's done you well so far, right? So think about what your values are. Think about what you're willing to put your name on, what you would be willing to endorse, what you would be willing to stand behind professionally, because that's going to be super important in your careers, where you'll sometimes perhaps get a lucrative opportunity as a graphic designer, as an animator, as an entertainment business professional, as a writer, that it won't co coincide at all with your personal beliefs. Like you would not want to put your name on that project. It could be well-paying, it could be prestigious, but if it doesn't line up, you're gonna be like, mm, I can't, I can't. And staying true to yourself and having that integrity will serve you far better than maybe taking an opportunity that works for, the works for you in the short term, but in the long term, where you're looking to get your big boy or big girl job and your employer, your prospective employer Googles you and they see your name on the credits of this project that they would never endorse, they're going to be like, well, I don't know if I want so-and-so working for us. That could be a problem. Uh, what if they're going to try to do that sort of thing here, right? So you have to think about the value system of the companies out there. They have their particular value system and belief system and code of conduct. You want to make sure that you're being as compatible with that system as possible by being honest with who you are, what you need, and what you can do, which is going to be the second part of this. Defining your goals. Consider your professional goals and how they can be aligned with your personal values. So what you believe, who you are, your personal code, whatever it happens to be, the things that make up who you are. Then you over here, and it's kind of blurry, but what you have is a profession or what your skills are, graphic design, animation, whatever. You want to make sure that these things are balanced. You don't want people to know that you're really, really good at your craft, but you're an Android. If you have a conversation with you, you're not very much of a team player. It's really hard to interface with you. You also don't want the opposite. Where you're really personable and you're charismatic and people love talking to you, but you have no clue what you're doing in the workplace and people can't rely on you professionally. You don't want this imbalance either. You wanna kind of sit in the middle where what you do and what you endorse and what you feel comfortable with in terms of your beliefs and then what you do uh, for a living or want to do for a living. And if you can combine those two things together, you're gonna be at peace, right? So it's really important for you guys to define both your values, what you believe in, even if it's something that you've held dear for your entire life and you know what you believe in, Sometimes it's helpful to write this stuff down, get it crystallized and codified, and then do the same thing for your goals. I want to be a graphic designer. I want to be a graphic designer who is a freelancer. I want to be a graphic designer who is a freelancer, who has clients that are international, that sort of thing, right? Where you start stair-stepping up, I want to do these things, do those things align with my personal values. Um, am I going to run up against a client? Like, let's say Nike is your client, right? Nike is a multi-billion dollar company. You would love to do graphic design work for this company, but then you do research on Nike and you find out years and years ago, I'm not sure if this is still happening, but years and years ago, Nike used child labor to create their footwear. You're a graphic designer. You don't design shoes. You don't build shoes. That has nothing to do with you. Do you guys think that would change or affect your decision-making process if you were to find that out about a company that you wanted to work for? Let's say they do something unethical in the past 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Would that be enough for you guys to be like, no, I don't think I want to be a part of this. What do you guys think? So Anissia says, absolutely. Okay. Are you guys willing to leave money on the table for what you guys believe in? Noah says it depends, of course. This is something where I'm asking you guys to just shun an opportunity without any sort of questioning or analysis of the situation. But I, that is something that I wanted to, you guys to start thinking about. I'm seeing a lot of yeses. That's good. That's really good. You want to make sure that whatever you're working on, you're willing to endorse it, 
and you're willing to stand behind the company that you maybe work for if they're involved in something controversial. I know there is a there was a lot of allegations against Blizzard Entertainment, and if you're not familiar, Blizzard Entertainment is a gaming company. They develop video games like World of Warcraft. If you've never heard of the company, you've probably heard of World of Warcraft or Hearthstone or any of those games. Well, if you look them up, because we don't have time to go into it, but if you look up this company and you just do a basic Google search on Blizzard employees, you're going to run into some results where you're like, I had no clue that this was happening. Why would this even happen at a game company? You guys design things to have fun, but you have all of these different allegations and there are people leaving. There's people that are unwilling to work under certain people because of these allegations, because they don't, again, are going to be in a situation professionally where they are not willing to endorse working with this product under this person because of what they've been accused of, right? So you, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation. I'm sure you guys can agree on that. How long does it take to ruin a reputation, do you guys think? It takes a lifetime to build one. How long does it take to lose a reputation? Almost no time. One second, very quickly. It can be something that you said out of turn, some sort of mixed message, some sort of you get caught in a lie or your company gets caught in a lie or caught in fraud or whatever it happens to be. You could be on top of the world, but it takes one instance of your reputation being sullied for people to be like, no, I don't want to do business with you anymore. That's bad business. I don't want to be associated with you. You see this happen all the time in the news. You're going to experience that at a more personal level with who you decide to work for. So always research the companies that you want to work for. Look at what they did in the past. See if they're willing, see if that company has created things and done things that you're willing to endorse and use that as part of the decision making process when it choose when you choose places to work for. So have your top three that you want to work for and your dream workplace, but don't be naive about it. Do your research and have an understanding of the companies you want to work for so that you can feel comfortable with your personal values aligning with the goals that they have set for you as a professional if they hire you. Right. I hope I'm making sense to you guys. So what kind of social media do you guys use? Any Instagrammers in here? I'm waving my hand because I use Instagram all the time, all the time. I love Instagram. So we see Abigail, we got Shantae, everybody in here so far is using Instagram, which is cool. Like it's one of those platforms that's great for artists, photographers, influencers, businesses, and so on. You can do pretty much anything with Instagram as long as your hashtag game is on point. What about Discord? Anybody, anybody use Discord in here? I use, I use Discord professionally. I use it for gaming. I use it for connecting with friends and family. Discord is a fantastic uh, tool. And if you're not familiar with Discord, think of it as a type of chat room. And it's a chat room where you can kind of be in a room with maybe 30 or 40 people, 14, 15 people, really, really small, intimate. Or you can be in a chat room with 32,000 people. And they're all display, they have all different sorts of channels. Um, you have your MOGs, you can post images, you can even do a uh, video chat. Um, you can get on your microphone and chat. Like it's a one-stop shop for any sort of online interaction that you might want to have. And it's really, really popular with gamers and younger people. And lucky for you guys, if you don't have any experience with Discord, you will get experience with Discord in the next coming months because the LA Film School has a Discord channel. You will get an invite to that and you will see all of these industry specific, degree specific channels where you can interface with your classmates, both past and present. You'll be able to interact with your courses, your instructors who you haven't met yet and will have in future classes. You can post your work, you can get critiques. You can all start doing that very, very soon. If it's not next month, it's the month after that you get access to that. And it's a fantastic resource. What about Facebook? I am right here with Facebook. I've had one for, I don't even want to say how long I've had on Facebook. I've had it forever and I almost never use it anymore. Almost never use it anymore. Uh, Anissia, I've heard that Facebook is really good for business. I've never approached it in that direction, but um, I can say that like just browsing um, the, the the my feed, like it's mostly just companies selling me stuff or it's like a donation page. Very rarely do I get like posts from people that I actually know. It's just a bunch of mishmash of nonsense on my personal page. If you're constructive with it and you're really structured with how you use Facebook, it can be a powerful tool. 
For me, I use it very casually and it reflects that. And I don't use it nearly as much as I used to in the past. What about Twitter? Twitter has been lighting up in the last couple of days. I'm sure you guys know why. So Twitter is one of those things where it's great if you get some popcorn and you're scrolling through your phone or you're scrolling through your feed and you're not interacting much personally. I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. I don't use it. I just go on there and I see what's going on in the world. I'll follow every now and again somebody brand new, but I don't use Twitter as a tool. It's one of those things where it kind of, um, I'm a little old fashioned. It's a bit, Twitter is a little bit too, um, what's the word I want to say, succinct for me. When you only have 240 characters, you can't really make a nuanced opinion unless you're willing to make a Twitter thread that's like eight or nine like tweets long. And at that point, it becomes very confusing to read. So Twitter is better for those hot takes. It's great to get news out there. It's great to promote your artwork. It's great to promote your music. Um, a student of my name, I think Jericho, shared some of his music on the, the discussion page and he had a, all of his music on Facebook. So, or not Facebook, Twitter, excuse me. And I went in there and I checked it out and I followed his, uh, his page. So it's a great way to kind of get your name out there, have a repository for all your stuff. And if you want to interact with you, it's just a simple DM away, right? So no matter your chosen poison, because social media can be argued to be a poison, I, all of these have constructive uses. And there's several that I didn't even mention. There's TikTok, there's Snapchat. I'm sure you guys can come up with other ones because they're the only two that are coming to mind right away. But there's social media everywhere um, and it abounds. Pinterest is another one where you can connect with people, like-minded individuals, and you can use these platforms as a basis for people to find you and what you're capable of. So think about what you post to social media in general. Probably friends and family pictures. Maybe every now and again, you'll get a keg stand picture on there, which is fine for the most part, but it's gonna be fairly light. I assume most of you are gonna have fairly light Facebook pages or, or Instagram pages. Hopefully nobody in here is getting too wild. But if you are getting wild, you gotta be careful because how you choose to use social media can impact your reputation. Your employers will Google you. Your freelance clients will Google you. Your corporations that you maybe want to work for, they're going to Google you. They're going to see what they can find, if anything. And you want to be very mindful of what they can find. So if you're out there doing keg stands, you're doing all sorts of crazy nonsense, you're a party animal, that's cool. No worries, no harm, no foul, but don't let your employer find that. It could sway their decision, whether it's fair or not. Let me, let me say that. Whether it's fair or not, your employer, your future employer may use your pictures as a determining factor on whether or not you'd be a good fit for the company. It might just be that you they don't like the way that you looked in a particular photo or they don't agree with your drinking or whatever it happens to be. It could be any number of reasons, but those reasons give them the opportunity to justify their decision to ignore you or pass you by. And you wanna reduce that possibility as much as possible. It will not be possible to eliminate it entirely, but if you can reduce the chances of people kind of being turned off of what it is that you're showing them, whether it's on your show, social media or how you carry yourself or your personal values, you want to reduce those chances as much as possible. So you want to create the best first impression for anyone who discovers your online presence. Like we talked earlier, we talked about how long it takes to build a reputation and how quickly it is um, it take it is to kind of ruin a reputation, a good reputation. First impressions are also this way too. You only get one. That's why it's called a first impression. And the thing in the online space is that you can't be there to defend everything that you post in every single context. You can't be on every single Twitter post that you've made, every single Instagram, every single Facebook post, being like, here's what I actually meant. Here's the context. I'm real. I'm an actual human being. Don't forget that in the process of reading what I wrote. When you guys can agree, it's very easy to separate ourselves from what we're reading about from what we're interfacing with. And it's very easy to forget that there's a person on the other side of that tweet, Facebook post, whatever. And some people just say whatever, uh, sometimes with their name attached. And it can be, just imagine if you were trolling on Facebook or trolling on Twitter and saying all sorts of wild things. And then your, your interviewer pulls up one of your tweets, spins their monitor around and says, explain this. I really like you, Damien. Diana, Evan, I really want to work with you. Your resume is sterling, but I found something that I want you to explain to me. Could you, do you mind? And then they spin the monitor around and you're like, 
you got to explain your hot take on Twitter that you posted two days ago. Never mind something 10 years ago, like James Gunn. You guys remember that situation? He was directing one of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I think it was volume two or volume three. And Disney pulled him out of the director's role. Thank you, Noah. It's volume three. Disney pulled him out of his directorial role because of a tweet that James Gunn made 10 years previously. I think it was like 2010, 2011, 2012, around that time. And as we all know, humor kind of changes decade by decade. So things that were funny 10, 20 years ago would get you in trouble today. And I'm sure you guys can come up with some examples for yourself. So you have to keep in mind that these people, these employers, they're going to be vetting you. And if they don't like anything that they see, it doesn't matter how long ago it was, it can impact your, um, your, your, your career prospects. Or if you already have a reputation and people find that out and they don't have context and you're not there to explain yourself and that's the first impression that they get of you and then they meet you later, well, they've already got a colored opinion about who you are and it could ruin a potential situation or, um, or opportunity that you didn't even know was in the pipeline, but they just happened to see what you were all about first before actually meeting you and that colored their whole perception. Please don't let that happen to you. Be mindful of what you post online and personal branding is a great way to kind of curtail that a bit so that you can separate who you are as a person and everything that that comes with versus who you are as a professional with a little bit of bleed over so that, again, people don't just see you as an Android that makes graphic design, uh, that, that makes graphic design projects all day. There's no personality to this person. They're just building business cards, websites, and so on. And there's not really much that I can get out of them um, as, as their, in terms of who they are, right? So you want to be very mindful of that. We're going to talk a little bit about personal branding and establishing your home base. Now, this topic, personal branding, huge, 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 huge. We're going to be hitting the broad strokes of it today, but I'm going to leave you guys with something that you can use and act upon even tonight if you so choose to. So we want you to start thinking about a home base for yourself. So some of you use Instagram, some of you use Twitter and Facebook. But which is your main platform? And if you want to answer in chat, you can, but I want you to start thinking about this. Which platform do you use every day? Which one do you check every day? Which one do you interface with every day? And that can be what you consider your home base because when you're familiar with it, you've already got the ingrained habit. Now you can start thinking of ways of how to use it in a professional way that's going to be productive for your future, right? So if Instagram is your thing, if FB is your thing, if Facebook is your thing, think about how you use it right now. And then think about how you can leverage that social media account if you don't want to make a new one into uh, being a professional asset. And one thing that you can do that makes it a bit easier on you is starting fresh with a brand new Facebook account, brand new Twitter account, Instagram account, and using that one as your professional basis. You are starting from scratch with zero followers, but you won't have any of your personal stuff following you around on the internet if your professional is the account. Account is the only thing that people can get a hold of in terms of your professional world. If that's all they know you by, they're not going to be able to get a hold of your personal stuff. And you should be okay if you want to kind of live that double life, right? So think about how social media, personal websites, and online portfolios are effective ways uh, to establish your online presence. And I've got some examples for you guys. And um, just to leave you with one more point here before we show off these examples is that you, I want you guys to think about how you would take the same preparations for an in-person job interview and translate that to the online space. So Anissia, Evan, Scott, when you're, 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 you got the job opportunity of a lifetime, right? They're asking you to come in. They're asking you for um, your resume. They want to interview you for this position. It's a six-figure position. You're only working four days a week. You're like, how in the world did I get this opportunity? Well, let me not let me not ask too many questions. Let me get in there and knock this interview out. Well, how do you best prepare for an interview? Well, you're going to do research on the company. You're going to spruce up your resume. Even if they say they like it, take a look at it again. You're going to dress the part. You're not going to go into that interview with a tank top on, ripped jeans, and flip-flops unless the company has that sort of thing as their culture. And even if they do, you're not going to do that. Business casual, maybe formal. If you're in a, a, a corporation, a bigger company, maybe we'll dress a little bit more formal. So all of these things, like I mentioned earlier, are going to reduce the probability of the interviewer interviewer to, to say no to, to you as a candidate. You want to come in there and dress the part. You want to be confident. You want to know your stuff. You want to have a polished resume. You want to ask questions of the interviewer so you're not just sitting there like a bump on a log and they're asking you questions. 
You want to be proactive. All of these things that you can do to prepare for an in-person job interview, think about how you can translate those to the online space. What kind of pictures are you going to use for your profile? What do you include in your profile? What do you show as the best work available? Like what, what's your best work and do you show that first? Do you have different sections where people can see how you were developing as a student? How you have your intermediate work here and then your professional work here so they have different differing expectations? Because if you're a professional in your field, you would not lead at the very top of your website with work you completed when you were a child, right? That is not representative of your skill set. You can have that off to the side and maybe like an archive where you're like, hey, this is how I came up. Isn't this interesting? You always want to lead with your best and your brightest, right? And you always want to dress up rather than dress down for any potential interviews. All right, so let's go through some of these home bases here. And these are just a couple. These are by no, this by no means an exhaustive list because I still have a lot to get through, right? So the first one I'm going to show you guys is Vimeo. And this is a, a, a video hosting website, very similar to YouTube, very, very similar, but it's a bit more focused. It's not um, nearly as clickbaity as YouTube can be. People aren't just posting whatever. The menu is great if you want to post film shorts, commercials, maybe the short movie that you've um, completed if you're in film, or your demo reel if you're in graphic design or computer animation. That's something that you can use Vimeo to, for as well. And this is something that I wanted to show you very briefly, is how you can use these um, platforms as a way to showcase your work and get people to reach out to you. So what you would do is you would have your work available here and then below you would maybe have some of your social media accounts. Like I don't want to go ahead and get into Zoom these information because we got plenty to do um, and still to do. But you can see here that this work looks really nice. It's a nice 3D model turnaround. You can see this hard surface robot model here. Looks very nice from both the rear angle and the front angle. And then you can see the rotation with some of the materials that were used and the programs that were used to make it. And then I think the next one is going to be the wireframe model. So you can see the edge loops and everything. So if you're a game developer and you're looking to hire a 3D modeler, all of these things are going to be very important for you to see as an interviewer. You're like, oh, this person is really, really good at X. They're really good at Y and they're awesome at Z. Okay, maybe I want to bring them in for an interview, or maybe I want to keep their demo reel and then again continue the, the hunting process. And look how long this demo reel is. This is two and a half minutes long. So you have two and a half minutes, maybe a minute and a half to impress someone who could potentially give you a life changing opportunity, right? So again, this student put their best foot forward. This was the best first impression of themselves that they wanted to give their prospective employer. And I think this looks pretty good. This is very representative of what um, a game developer would want from one of their, their uh, employees. Someone that's able to take a concept, develop a 3D model, and here's the most important part, articulate their process and their, their workflow. How did you get from A to B to C all the way to Z? And can you explain it in reverse order? Because if you know your stuff forward and backwards, that gives you the confidence to walk into that interview and say, hey, I heard you saw my demo reel. Let's, let's talk about it, right? You can create those opportunities where you are the one with the initiative rather than like biting your nails, hoping you're going to nail the interview. You can go in there with the interview being a foregone conclusion because they know they, that the prospective client, the interviewer knows what you're capable of and they liked you enough to bring you in in the first place. That's already enough ammunition for you to get, hit the ground running and really nail that interview, right? So that's Vimeo, very, very basic um, video hosting website with a lot of focus on the academics. So make sure that you use this one instead of YouTube if you want to post up your demo reel or any of your shorts, simply because there's going to be more focus on the material that you're presenting rather than there being like a recommended on the side where you can just click away like you're, um, you're, you're web surfing or channel surfing on YouTube. It's very easy to get distracted. Whereas Vimeo is a bit more focused and a bit more industry oriented. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is LinkedIn, which needs absolutely no introduction whatsoever. I use LinkedIn as a way to stay um, connected to my coworkers, past people that I've worked with. And every now and again, I'll add someone brand new just to make sure that I've got some sort of um, networking in play. And it's always great to come through here see what people are posting. And if you see someone posting something interesting and they're in your field, look at their profile, see what they do for a living. Maybe you want to do a deeper dive into who they are 
to kind of get a feel for the type of people that are in your industry in positions that you want to be in, right? So if you're in graphic design, you have a LinkedIn. If you're not following graphic designers, you're in trouble. If you're in computer animation, you're not following game artists, 3D artists, game animators, and so on, you're in trouble. You're not hanging around the right crowds. You need to find who these people are. And one of the best ways to do that is look at the credits, your favorite games, your favorite television shows. Look at the producer credits. Look at the lighting credits, the 3D model, the animator credits, and start Googling names, which is going to be a part of the project or part of the activity that we're going to be um, talking about a bit later. Look at who these people are, what they're, wanting, what they're doing, and if that's something that you want to do, you might warrant reaching out to them to see if they have any advice for you. It's very, very difficult to be shy and be successful in this industry. You're going to be talking to people. You're going to be networking. And some of these people can provide opportunities for you in the future, if not now, but you got to do the ground floor work to get those um, relationships started, right? Next, what I'm going to show you guys is SoundCloud for our sound folks out there, our music folks out there, which needs no introduction. If you want to host your music on here, this is a great way for you to get that outreach and to have a repository that you can link people to. So if you're on Instagram and you make music, well, you're not going to be able to post your music there, but you can link to your SoundCloud. And maybe your Instagram is for photos of you, photos of album art, high concept photos that kind of represent the vibe of your music. And people, you, you can use that as to attract people. They're like, oh, I like this visual. Let's see the music that goes along with the visual. I see this happen all the time on Instagram for people that release music. It's great. Another one that a student introduced me to, which is very similar, is BandLab. Very similar to a SoundCloud where you can post up your music, you can interact with other like-minded individuals, you can use it as a repository or portfolio, if you'd rather say that, um, to, to give people an avenue to check out what you're capable of and, again, come back and interact with you a little bit deeper, if they so choose. Reverb Nation is yet another one. I kind of smooth through these very quickly. And then if you're on YouTube and you do want to use YouTube as a resource, there are absolutely communities on YouTube for artists. Like this guy is Ergo Josh. He's one of the um, best artists that I've um, seen in recent years. And his desk tour, I don't know if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it really quickly. This desk tour inspired my whole setup. The setup that I showed you guys last week um, for my own personal setup, I, I kind of talked about that last week. This guy was my inspiration for changing up my entire workflow, for changing up my entire desk, uh, my whole routine, the way that I interfaced with my artwork, and just the 15 minute video changed everything that I did. And this was like six or seven, eight months ago that I started this transformation. So having other people out there who uh, do what you do or are in a position to do what you want to do, and they've got a strong brand, start taking notes. Not only are you learning from them and learning from their craft and being a part of their community, as you can see here, um, you're going to find inspiration within yourself to say, hey, he's doing that. I can do that, too. How can I put my own flavor and spin on that and really make it something that's representative of who I am, right? Next, what I want to show you guys is CG Society for our animation folks, graphic design folks. This is fantastic. If you're in the visual art, you guys can see here the art here is top shelf. Fantastic. And you want to use this as a bar for your own efforts, because if you can see where these people started, you would laugh. They were building cubes. They were drawing stick figures. They were doing very, very basic work before they got to this level, because we all start somewhere. Nobody pops out of the womb making art this good. Nobody five or 10 years old is making art this good. They were scribbling on paper, scribbling on the walls, making their parents upset, but they never stopped. They stuck with it, and they kept their creative a passion. And eventually you get to the point where you're making stuff like this and it looks fantastic. And you can see here that there's the final image and you've got some of the behind the scenes stuff where you see the actual geometry. And then people can rate whether or not this work was good. And if they think it's really good, your pose expression is nice, your presentation is nice, your lighting rendering is nice. So you can get basic level critiques in this bar chart form of what you're doing well. So you can post your work here. It can be a repository for what you're capable of. And you can also get feedback from your peers about your progress. So if you're at a student level and identify a search, you're not gonna see people being like negative five. This is not professional. This is terrible work. Well, I'm a beginner. Of course, it's not gonna be the best work possible. It's not gonna look anything like this, right? So make sure that you understand your skill level. Um, don't be discouraged by work that looks really nice that you're not capable of because 
a lot of these people started in the exact same position that you are right now. And it took them a long time to get here. And you're going to go through that same journey as well. And it's great to stand up on the shoulders of giants sometime to see what you're capable of instead of just going through the vacuum and going through the motions, not really sure if what you're creating is going to be appealing for the industry that you're part of, right? You don't want to make a ton of work and then have it be all based on research that's outdated. Yeah, your work would have been great in 2006 or in 2022. There's different tastes. There's, there's a different political climate, it's a different cultural climate. The work that was really effective back then is probably not going to be effective now with some manic caveats for stuff that's just timeless and classic. Um, that'll never go out of style. But think about all of the different logos, magazine covers, advertisements that were out in 2006. How many of you do, do those do you really remember? How many advertisements do you guys remember from 2016, right? Probably a handful, but not every single one that you saw, right? So it's one of those things where um, having a big sample size to choose from in terms of your inspiration can help you a ton. Even if not all of this is to your taste, it's great to just see what's out there so you have an understanding of what, what you're, you're supposed to be at in terms of your level versus what you're capable of. And then you can start bridging that gap by getting better, learning more, doing research, practicing, and not being afraid to be wrong, right? ArtStation is another one, very similar to CG Society. And I'm going to go through this one quickly because it's very much similar to what we just saw. And this is some of my work that I have on CG Society or ArtStation. And the reason I'm showing you this, because I'm not going to harp on this very long, the reason I'm showing you my old work, artwork here is because you always want to keep everything that you make in, the, in terms of a creative sense, whether you're working on films, graphic design like brochures or logo designs, even your entertainment business briefs, like briefs or pitches that you write, um, writing, if, for, if you guys are in communications as well, like you're gonna be writing press releases, you're gonna be doing all sorts of things that are gonna be deliverables, either for a grade or for a paycheck. Keep everything. Because earlier on in your career, you're not going to have a full, you're not going to be setting your ways. You're going to be learning. You're going to have some good habits, but none of those bad habits that you're going to establish as a professional have taken root. So you're more willing to kind of bend the rules and try stuff. And you're not afraid to be wrong because again, you're learning, you're at the very beginning of your career. Keep all of that stuff where you were rule breaking, not sure what you were supposed to be doing, experimenting, having fun. Because if you keep all that information, you keep all that um that inspiration, it will pay dividends later on by showing you your growth, your overall perspective as an artist, how far you've come, right? And you can also mine them for ideas. It's not self-plagiarism at all or anything like that. It's coming in here and saying, hey, I designed a lightsaber a few years ago. I don't design lightsabers now, but I really like how this was presented. Maybe I want to do this sort of presentation again for a graphic design piece that also involves some art that I made, right? So you got the wireframe model, you got the model at the bottom, and then you got all this text along the top. I like how this looks. Let me make something brand new with this sort of feel to it. So I can use this as like a reference piece. Or if I go to, let's see, this guy right here. I don't draw spaceships anymore. I can't draw things like this anymore because I don't have the patience anymore. This took a really long time to build. And this is from like, 10, 11 years ago, long time ago, right? So I can use this as a basis for, for inspiration. I don't draw spaceships like this anymore, but I do like that it has the dorsal fin here and this big tail and this nice fearsome head. It looks kind of like a dragon mixed with a, with a shark, right? Very interesting profile, very interesting silhouette. So I can use some of these shapes in future pieces if I chose to. Like I design jewelry now. I do a lot of character design now. So I can maybe take some of these motifs and bring it into the work that I create now. So like, I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't keep all this really, really old work. This was posted seven years ago and I made it four or five years previous to that. So this is all really, really old stuff. I don't make artwork like this anymore. Just like eventually you guys will create a bunch of, a body of work where some say, things at the very beginning you just aren't capable of. You're not in that same headspace. You're not in that same creative space. Keep everything. Don't throw anything away, not a project not a practice piece, not a scratch piece. Keep everything because you never know where inspiration can strike. And it can always be something, something you created when you were much, much younger in your career that, again, gives you the opportunity to come up with something even better now, something more original, something more uh, evocative, something like this. Like, I think that's very interesting. I eventually want to come back to and blow up this design and actually make it fully detailed rather than having this basic little kind of 
figure here, right? So I show you all that to show you this. This is where I'm at right now. This is what my artwork looks like right now. I've been working on a portrait series for my characters uh, that I that I create, that I've been, I've been working on a novel and I've got these characters that I've created. And this is one of the output pieces. And if I go to my actual Instagram, you'll see just a few pieces here, right? So I've got just a couple of things on Instagram and you'll notice that that piece is not on Instagram because I'm gonna be a dude doing a big like a push to Instagram later on this year. But this is the work that I've been working on now. And as you can see, you've got a little, this lady here and then you've got her dad and then you've got her mom in the framed photograph. And this frame, the frame actually extends around the digital image itself. So it looks like it's a actual thing that you would hang on a wall. It's got a frame and everything. You just put it on the wall, right? So this is where I'm at right now which looks nothing like my um, art station stuff. My art station stuff is very cartoony, very vivid, very bold, where this is kind of subtle, where I'm really focusing in on, let me make something that looks like it was a photograph taken of people that are kind of like animated, that are kind of like, not photorealistic, but they have lots of realistic parts. Like I've got the glare and the glasses up here and I've focused on some really specific details, but you would never mistake this for being photorealistic, right? But I can take, again, some of those elements from my past work, like you'll see here that the picture frame and her dress have these little LEDs in them. That picture of that, that dorsal fin shark spaceship had all those little lights on it, right? Where do you think that came from? So all the little lights that you would see on a spaceship, I was like, what if you put that on clothes? Or what if you put that on a picture frame? How cool would that look? It would really add a little bit of extra pop, right? To the image. It's not something you normally see. That's legacy. This idea that you see in the picture frame with the LEDs and on the clothes, that 13-year-old, 14-year-old idea that I've been carrying forward and remixing and reusing and recontextualizing over time, right? So don't discount your old work because you never know how it can elevate the work that you're capable of after you've got some professional experience under your belt. Keep everything, right? So that's enough about me. Let's talk about an actual professional. Someone's really good, right? So this is Lowish. And as you can see, she's way more active on Instagram than I am. How many posts does she have? 1,173 posts, 2.5 million followers, and just a couple of like 2,500 2, actual people she's following, right? So fantastic artist, amazing artist, right? Amazing work. Sometimes there's actual videos in here like this. You can see where she starts with the sketch and then it goes through the whole progression to get to the final piece, which is fantastic for learning, for artists who are learning so they can see, oh, I, this is actually approachable. I can do some of these same things too. My artwork won't look like that, but I understand the process. I can do this myself, right? And I can learn additional techniques to get even better, right? So she's a fantastic resource and her digital footprint, her personal brand, her home bases. Look at this, guys. So you see her Instagram, right? Look at her Twitter. That's exactly the same person. You can scroll through here. You can tell exactly who this is. Look at their personal website. Exact same person. You can see resources, art books about in the FAQ. And here's what I wanted to mention. I usually mention this without a visual aid, but on your personal website, on your Facebook page, on your Instagram page, don't be afraid to link all those things together. They used to have this thing called a web ring where one person would link to this site and then another person would link to theirs and to someone else's. And then that person would link to theirs and you would have this circle, right? Of people who are all linked to one another, do this for yourself. On her personal website, you can see a link to her Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all here at the very bottom. So if you go to the her, her website first, and you're like, well, I got to contact this lady or I want to add her on Instagram. Boom, I want to add her on Twitter, Facebook, boom. I want to pay her money to make artwork on Patreon. She has this right here. So her Patreons are $5 a month and she has 4540 patrons. Let's do some basic math. Let's do some quick math times five. Look how much money she's making a month. $22,700 a month, guys, on her Patreon. So Loish has got it going on, right? So this is one of those things where someone who has a very strong personal brand has an understanding of their personal values. They have a clear understanding of their personal goals and professional goals and what they want to do to get there. And they've got a nice home base set up with other places that are linked to each other, like linked to their home bases. So you got your main website here, 
and then you have your social media outreach here so if people find you on instagram they know where to find you on facebook and they know how to find your patreon and they know how to find your personal website same for twitter same for the personal website you can find all the links down here and if you go to patreon i'm sure somewhere right here instagram and twitter you can immediately find the other places that she's posted on the web so not only are you going to set up your base guys you've got to make sure that you are expanding the base so if you guys are starting on Instagram, you're starting on Facebook, great. Use that as your basic, your, your base, your, your command center. But don't discount having other places where people can find you because that casts a wider net for people to have that initial first impression of who you are and what you can do, right? So start small, build that snowball, get ready to roll it down here so that it can become an avalanche, but you got to pack it tight and you got to be prepared. You got to be able to get out of the way of your own success too right? When it comes to expanding your base and creating work and then populating all these places with your work and then actually being a part of those communities and being active. It's a lot to ask for and it's a big investment both emotionally and physically, but it is going to pay dividends later on. And it becomes one of those things where it's very front loaded, where you're doing a lot up front, but those dividends came out like they, they, they progressively, um, they grow, they grow over time. And there's less and less work you have to do because your body of work has been established. Like Lois only has to post maybe once or twice a week that instead of posting like maybe two or three or four times a day to get her outreach, right? And yes, Abigail, that is actually exactly what web greens are called nowadays. They're called link trees. So Abigail brings the concept of link trees where all of your links are available in one spot. That's exactly the same concept, Abigail, absolutely. But if someone doesn't have a link tree, they might have to do this circular thing where you have all of your different locations spread over, over different websites. But the case in point here is that you wanna make sure that your branding is consistent across all of your different home bases. So this looks the same as this, which looks the same as this, which looks the same as this. So if you are expanding your home base and you're having multiple places where people can find you, make sure all of those places are cohesive visually and that might have that might uh, enable some of you guys to or pro prompt some of you guys to hire some of your um graphic design classmates to make sure that all of this is on point right so i want to leave you with one more link here for seven different types of social media there might be some untread paths in this link here but we are running out of time and i want to cover the rest of our material so i'm just going to leave that for your your um personal use so again, think about how you can establish your home base and then how you can expand it and how you want to expand it. Do you want to go to social media? Do you want to create your own website? Do you want to have a portfolio site off to the side that you're using for experiments and then port that over to your main Instagram later on? It's up to you. It's no one size fits all. It's going to be based on what you're currently doing right now. If it's not much, uh, just get started. But if you already have a strategy in play, think about how you can maybe refine that strategy a little bit to get where you really want to be, right? And having an online presence doesn't help much if you don't have a direction for your passion. So those questions that I asked you much earlier, who are you? What's your definition? You want to make sure they have good answers for those before you even get to this point, right? So start there, ask those tough questions of yourself. And once you've got a couple of good answers, you can start moving in this direction of getting your home base set up. And then once that's set up, you can think about how you can expand it because it's important for you guys to, to, to define your expertise before someone else does. Uh, clients or employers may be attracted to a specific skill set that you've shown off in your portfolio, but you might not want to be hired for that specific thing. For me personally, one more time, I'll use myself as an example. I used to go, I went to school for graphic design. I used to be a graphic designer. I would design logos, websites, brochures, you name it, I could do it, right? However, years and years ago, about six or seven years ago, I made a transfer. I made the, the, the decision to transfer my skill set over to character art. So you guys saw some of my artwork earlier with the, the young lady holding the portrait. That's what I'm good at now. And I can't tell you how long it took for people to stop asking me for brochures and business cards because that was the only thing that I was making. I was not interested in doing freelance work for my graphic design degree any longer. I wanted to pivot my skill set to something new, something I've never tried before. That was far more difficult to me because again, I wanted to kind of expand my horizons. So eventually, someday, somehow, you're gonna have work on your portfolio that really jives with someone. They love it, they love it, they love it. And then they're gonna ask you, hey, 
I really want you to design this for me. I want you to make this song for me. I want you to do this, this, and this for me. And you saw this work in your portfolio. Can you make it like that? And you're going to be like, you might cringe up. You might seize up. You're like, that was really, that was a long time ago. I don't really do work like that anymore. Here's more of my current stuff. This is more representative of what I'm like right now as a professional. And sometimes clients will be okay with that and work with you. Sometimes they're like, no, I want this. Can you do this for me? And if you can't do this for me, the conversation's over. And you're like, well, uh, have a good day, I guess. Like there's not really much wiggle room for you because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you get hired for a job that you can't finish because your reputation, again, can be put in tatters because you made a decision that was short-term without considering your long-term consequences. So don't say yes to every single job that crosses your lap. And remember, guys, what do you want to be hired for? And make sure that you tailor your career towards that and tailor your attitude towards that. But you have to think about the steps you're going to take to get there as well. And along the way, you're going to learn skills here at the LA Film School that just don't aren't compatible with you. You're like, why am I learning this? This isn't valuable for me. Don't think that way. Everything that you're going to learn here is extremely valuable. Even if it's skill, you only use it and you get your grade and you're like, oh, I really don't like audio. I don't want to, I want to move on and move past this. But I did learn this, this, and this. So when I speak to someone that does have an audio background, I'll be able to hold a conversation with them. And that's valuable. You never know where that opportunity can take you, right? So you want to be very, so yeah, Mason is starting fresh. So it's going to pay off absolutely in the long run. You want to be very mindful of what it is that you want to do, how you want to get there, who you are as a person, and what opportunities do you want to shoot for, and then cater everything around that, right? So you don't have, yeah, have a place of your own online. Think of ways you can start today. So I, again, I'm approaching this from the assumption that a lot of you haven't really thought about this too much. So sometimes it's a matter of retooling your social media presence as it is. And sometimes this is just a matter of, like Mason said, starting brand new. You have a brand new profile set up. And that's what you use going forward for your professional career. And that's how people find you when you want them to find you for anything related to what you want to do for a living. All right. So that's our lecture. So in our last couple of minutes here, let's talk about week three. And I've got two examples that I can show you for 3.2 and 3.4. And let's close all these tabs so my computer stops sounding like a jet engine. All right. So the 3.1. A live class activity. You guys have made it to week three. You know the process here. This is the question that you're going to be answering for this live class. How important is it to create and maintain a professional online presence? And we talked about a lot today. So if you need to go back and watch the recording after this to get a few of those bits and pieces that you might not have recalled, because we don't expect you guys to take notes, you can do that. But definitely, or you can even answer it now that the uh, information now that the information is fresh. But we want you to have a nice, detailed answer for this covering everything that we talked about in tonight. Well, not everything, but some of the things that we talked about tonight, you can use examples, you can bring in links, uh, you can talk about how this would affect you personally and some of the things that you might wanna do. Because right now, uh, I want you guys to uh, focus on you. This week is all about you and how you can leverage the tools that are available to you, the people in your industry, how can you get leverage them to advance your professional career and accelerate your goals, right? Enchante, the uh, recording will be available around an hour after the session concludes. So we're going to finish up here at around 9.35-ish, 9.40-ish. So like just before, like 20 till 11 is when it should be uploaded because I've got to, um, it's got to be decoded. I've got to upload it and then I've got to double check everything. So it takes a little bit of time. All right, so that's 3.1. 3.2, this is going to be something I have an example for. This is all about the industry and digital platforms where you guys are going to go out you're going to select a platform that you're already familiar with or one that you're new to, and you're going to find an industry professional using that platform, and you're going to analyze how you can benefit from the analysis that you've taken. Like, how can this, um, how can Facebook be useful for me as a professional? How is the individual that I found using it? What is it used for in general? That way you can identify some of the traits of these home bases that we've talked about and whether or not they'd be a good fit for you. So this is all about analysis so that you can make these snap judgments later on where um, after you've already got this sort of experience under your belt. The discussion for this week, 3.3, is gonna talk about your digital presence and the things that you're doing in the online space right now. So this is for very people who are at the very beginning of their career, and then people who are like Anissia who already have an established brand, right? So this is for everybody on both ends and in the middle. 
no matter your experience level or how prevalent you are in the online space. Next thing I'm going to show you guys is the 3.4 project. I've got an example for this one as well. And this kind of dovetails from your 3.2. So an industry professional that you use for 3.2 can also be used for 3.4. And I'm going to show you what that entails right now. Okay, so 3.1, I'm going to get this out of the way very quickly. There will be a recording up here that you guys can see in about an hour. And Lawrence, uh, T. Lawrence, Pinterest might not be the best one to pick for this one because you're not going to find lots of industry professionals on Pinterest posting things. It's going to be like uh, image boards and inspiration boards, but not like social media messages. It might not be the best one to pick. However, if you can make it work, I would be very interesting, interested to see that actually done because normally um, Pinterest isn't one that I see as an example. If you can make it work, I'd be more than happy to uh, accept that as a valid, as a valid um, digital platform. But we are looking for things like Instagram, um, Twitter, Facebook, your usual suspects, TikTok even. Uh, something like that would be a better fit for the 3.2 activity. All right, so here is, again, the question for 3.1. The video is going to be up here, the recording. And then now here, you're going to be answering this question. How important is it to create and maintain a professional online presence? All right. So 3.2, this is going to be your first or your second graded activity. And what you want to do is you want to, in this assignment, we want you to seek out what digital platforms are currently being used by professionals in the industry of your degree, such as social media, a blogging page, a personal website, or an online portfolio. There's quite a bit of things that you can choose in there, right? So before starting, we want you to select what type of file you're going to use. So you can use PowerPoint, you can use Keynote, you can use Microsoft Office or Pages whatever you wanna use, um, but we are make, asking you to make a file and then fill it out with this information that we're gonna be providing to you. So step one, we want you to research some examples of digital platforms. So you might already have some available to you like our normal social media platforms here. You can also use YouTube, you can use WordPress, you can look at personal websites. There's a lot here that you can use. And we also have examples here as well. By no means this is exhaustive. If you've got something that doesn't fit this list, ask your instructor if you're unsure, but it's probably going to be a good fit. Um, just just um, see if you can, um, what do I want to say here? See if any of these fit what you're looking for. And if they are, awesome. And if they're not, ask your instructor. And if um, it's a digital platform um, that we've never heard of, it's still OK to use as long as you can answer all these questions in full detail. So think about social media, think about blog posts and people that host blogs, portfolio websites like ArtStation and CG Society and SoundCloud. I showed these three today. Um, and you've also got personal websites and personal website builders like Squarespace and Wix. So if you find per what personal websites that are hosted on these, that's exactly what these are for. These aren't digital platforms unto themselves, but they can be platforms in which people host their work. So that's why we include these, just so that you are aware that they exist. So step two, we want you to identify and examine two examples of digital platforms used by professionals within the your industry of your degree. So for example, you can use a blog and a um, web, personal website. You can use social media um, and two different versions of social media. So you're not going to use Twitter and Twitter for this assignment. You're going to use Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, CG Society, Instagram. You're going to use two different ones for this uh, activity, OK? And when you examine your two platforms, explain how to be utilized to enhance your work, digital presence, and heighten your career. So you're looking for justifications as to why this platform can work for you, not how entertaining is it, how easy it is to waste time here. Think about this in a career mind uh, with a career mindset. How can I use this to advance my career? Is this going to help me with my professional goals? How does this professional use it that I'm analyzing? And so on, right? And we've got your questions that you need to answer here. And you can, it's just a matter of copying and pasting these guys into a new Word doc or into a new slideshow. So we have it all right here for you. You don't have to rewrite your questions and the answers. Or um, if you don't want to write the question and the answer, you can just have number one, here's the platform, number two, answer, number three, answer, number four, answer, right? So however you want to configure this, as long as you're answering all four questions for two platforms in complete detail. So the first question is, what is the name of the digital platform and then a link to it? So if it's Twitter, just link to Twitter. Very easy. Number two, what type of digital platform is it? So you're going to identify if it's social media, is it a blog, is it a portfolio, etc. Number three, this is the big question here. 
In what manner is it being used by industry professionals? And your answer should be at least four sentences in length and provide detail and explanation to support your statement. I think it's useful for X, Y, and Z reasons. And I want to also talk about this reason and this reason. And I see that industry professionals are using it in this way. I also see being seen be it seen used in this way, which I don't think is constructive. So if you see things that you don't want to do or disagree with, that can also go in your, your answer here. What's working and what's not working. And I'm going, I see your questions. I'm gonna get through this very quickly uh, before I answer any questions. So number four, and then we want you to provide a link to an industry professional social media that reflects your chosen digital platform. So one, two, three, and four for platform one, and then these exact same questions for platform two. And then you're going to submit a document that's 3.2 digital platforms, last name, first name. And this is the rubric that we're using to assess you. And we're looking for all those questions to be answered, especially number three, where we're looking for four sentences, about a paragraph. So if that question is answered very lightly, you will see your, your uh, score here kind of fall a bit. So it's 90% of your effort here is answering those questions. And then 10% is going to be you writing properly. So run spell check before you answer these. Um, maybe type these out in Microsoft Office, um, run spell check, and then that's when you upload your document. So be very mindful about your writing mechanics and everything. And as an example, here's what 3.2 looks like in practice. So let's zoom in a little bit here so you guys get a feel for what this is supposed to look like. So we can see here that this student is covering Twitter. And again, this is the first answer to their question, Twitter, and then twitter.com. What type of platform is it? Social media. And then in what manner is Twitter being used? And then you can see their answer here. And then number four, provide a link to an industry professional social media that reflects your chosen digital platform. And then your instructor can click this. And then that will be taken to Twitter. And then we can kind of see how you came up with your answers, right? So we can see that this is an, uh, a screenwriter. We can look through his Twitter account. We can see how he's using Twitter. We can see who he's talking to, interfacing with, posts that he's making, and all of this sort of things here, right? So this is going to be informative in terms of seeing, OK, if I want to be in this field and I want to be doing some of the same things that this person is doing, what kind of profile picture do I need to add? What kind of things do I need to include in my profile here? Um, do I need to include my location information? What type of things does this person post about? Is it images? Is it GIFs? Is it just text? What's the tone of the way that they're writing? What kind of messages do they include? Do they retweet things that are supportive of causes that I believe in or they believe in or are they just retweeting random stuff? Like that's the type of analysis that we're looking for you guys to dive into. And we wanna see at least one example from an industry professional. So that's one for Twitter. And then we can see the second one here is Instagram. It's social media. We see this detailed answer here as to how social, uh, Instagram can be used constructively. And then we have um, our industry professional here. We can click and then go straight to their Instagram page and see how this individual is using Instagram in a way that is evocative and helpful for their goals as a filmmaker, right? And that is the example for 3.2. I'll just scroll up through it one more time. So digital platform one answer these questions with number three being the most important one to answer thoroughly. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing again for a second digital platform. Okay, so we got a couple of questions in here. Uh, Tiana is asking, can I submit the project in Google Doc form because the Word doc doesn't work for me? Uh, yes, Tiana, you can write and compose your project in Google Docs, but you wanna save it as a Word document because we don't accept link Google Doc links for submissions, uh, the, the, the class platform will uh, register that you submitted anything. So definitely download your document and then upload that. And Abigail, it can be, it, try to pick two different people just so you have a wider perspective rather than picking the same person twice. Try to pick two people for this one, two different people. All right, so that's 3.2. 3.3, very quickly, let's go through your discussion topics here. So for your initial post, we want you to answer all four of these posts here. And then when asked about social media or online platforms, you do not need to include your account name, just the, the, um, the websites that you use. So if you don't want people to know how to find you on the internet, because we're all relative strangers here, you do not have to link your personal account. That's completely up to you. If you want to do that, cool. If you don't want to do that, that's cool too. So here's what you want to answer. Number one, what online platforms do you currently use for personal for personal or professional purposes. 
How do you separate your personal and professional digital selves? How frequently do you use the online platforms that you mentioned? And we want you to assess your personal and professional presence. What changes or actions would you take going forward in regards to their use? So if you're starting brand new, this will be a hard one to answer. So, so the one way you can, can answer this is that I'm starting brand new. I don't have any bad habits. I know what it will take to actually create a constructive social media presence. Um, and that's one of the ways that you can answer number four, because we do get that question from students. I don't have any social media. How am I going to answer this, um, this discussion? Think about what you would do and how you would plan for the future, and that will be perfectly fine. All right, so that is the, oh, there's also some things you want to do in top, on top of answering. You want to use the discussion bars toolbar to link function to make sure that one of your answers is linked to the main side of the online platform that you chose. So if you're talking about Instagram, your post, link to Instagram, but you don't have to link to your account. Number two, you want to use the discussion format function to change the style of your answer to like italics, like you can see here. You can bold it, whatever you want to do. Just make sure it's not normal text. We also want you to use the toolbar to highlight part of your text um, right here for number three. So you can highlight a word or the whole thing. We just want to see you using that tool. And then number four, there's no formatting needed. And the formatting tools are all right here because you can change your format. You can insert a link here, and this will allow you to highlight your text. All you do is highlight it and then press this button, and it'll give you that bright yellow highlighter color like you're using a marker, right? And those are the discussion topics that we want you to answer. And the rubric for this week is the same as week one and two. We're looking for relevance, thoroughness, and clarity. Making sure that you reply to at least one of your classmates with three to four sentences, a nice meaty reply. And then did you run spell check? Did you make sure that you were crossing your T's and dotting your I's, right? So that is your discussion for week three and week four. Here is our project. And I've got an example for this one too. And we are over on time, but I just want to thank you all again for sticking with me. We are almost done. I've got one more example to show you. Okay, so for this project, you're going to think about how um, you can look at our industry professional, an entertainment industry professional, and leverage their experience for your gain and to gain perspective on where you want to maybe adjust or make your trajectory for yourself as an, inter an industry professional, right? And this could be someone that you picked for the 3.2 assignment. So I mentioned that much earlier. So if you picked an industry professional for 3.2 and you use them as an example for your digital platforms, you can use them for this project if they have a substantial digital footprint that you can kind of follow and see what they're all about. They've got a lot of body of work, they have social media. There's a way for you to kind of do an investigative report on what they're all about and then make some determinations about what you want to do. And I've got this laid out in an example so you can see this in practice. Okay, so for this project, you're going to select an entertainment industry professional and profile his or her presence online. So put on your FBI cap, your NSA cap, your CIA cap, you're going to be doing some investigative uh, journalism here. You're going to be really diving deep on these individuals. And after your research is compiled for your profile, consider how these lessons learned in this exercise might help you manage your own approach. So don't pick someone super famous, like that got their career through dumb luck. You want to pick someone like a lighting artist, an animator, a, a, a studio producer, maybe a showrunner, a show producer, someone who has a role that is actually approachable where you're like, yeah, I could see myself being a gaffer or a lighting artist or an animator or a 3D modeler doing this work, an environment artist doing this work in maybe a year or two after I graduate, maybe five or six years. But I'm not going to expect myself to be a multi-millionaire studio producer doing this, this, and this, and having all sorts of higher powered conversations. That is something that some of you will get to do, but it isn't something that's a foregone conclusion. So you want to kind of shoot for the stars and land somewhere near the moon with whom you look for for this assignment. You also don't want to pick people who are famous for being famous. I'm sure you guys can think of a few examples, right? So for part one, select a template. You can use a PowerPoint template. We've got it all written out for you. So you just got to fill in your answers or you can use a Word document. And the example I'm going to show you is a Word document. So these are both the same. They're asking for the same information. They're just either in a slideshow format or a document format. And we have everything laid out for you. Here's what we expect from you. Here is what you need to answer. And here's where your answer goes. And you'll do this for five different sections. And then part two, you want to complete your industry professional profile. So using a search engine, you're going to research and select a figure from your industry. And the person you select must be alive. They must be in somewhere on earth right now, six feet above the ground, walking around, talking and doing stuff. However, 
And this is a caveat. If it's someone that has a strong digital presence and they passed away maybe a year and a half ago, six months ago, that's a bit easier. But we're not looking for you to cover Walt Disney or, or someone else like that that has just been, they've been gone for a really long time. You can find all sorts of Disney information online. Disney has a huge online presence, but the actual guy, he's been gone for a while, so you wouldn't be able to pick him. But if you wanted to pick Bob Eager, which is one of the CEOs or CFOs or creative directors, or one of those guys, he's up there in the field, but he used to work for Disney. And that's someone that you could cover as an industry professional, not actual Walt Disney, but one of the people that has worked for him and is still alive, right? Or worked for that company and is still alive. So please keep this in mind. And they also want, you want them to have an established digital presence, at least a couple of different social media accounts and our websites so you can gather information and actually complete the project. You don't want to pick someone who has no online presence whatsoever because that's not going to help you with this project at all. So have your top three, do some analysis and, and research on each one of them. And the one that has the most information is probably going to be a great fit for this project. Or you can just pick whoever you want and um, see if it fits. But it is easy to pick yourself into a corner. If you pick someone you've never heard of before and they have a little bit of social media presence, but there's one part of one question that and answer, you might get lose points for your answer being too short. It, it can be very dicey to deal with that. So pick someone that you have who has a substantial online presence you have a lot to work with. So the table below will list some roles from respective degrees to help you in your search. So you can look up producers, musicians, engineers, writers, directors, animators, environment designers, typographers, logo designers. You can look for manager, managers, record label executives, writers, producers, script editors, public relations agents, marketing executives, um, video or audio producers, any role you can think of. Or if you want to go to your favorite video game, television show, movie, and just go straight to the credits and watch and scroll through and just start picking names and doing Google searches, that's another great way to kind of get those unsung heroes who have made the things that you enjoy, right? And then once you've chosen your industry, prof your professional, you're going to begin researching them and you're going to be um, to be able to answer the prompts that are included in the template. And we want you to find sources of online activity, things that they're talking about, things that people are writing about them if they're fairly well known. Um, you can look at YouTube videos that they've made. You can look at their personal website, their social media accounts, individual posts that they've made, what they're retweeting, their body of work. Whatever you can find, you're going to compile it in this project. And it can be as thorough or as sparse as you like, but there is gonna be a minimum that we want you guys to kind of adhere to. That's gonna be three to four sentences per section. But if you go above and beyond that, that's completely cool. And if you have trouble with research or exciting your um, site, creating your citations, we've got a assistance guide here, but we're mostly looking for the URLs. So if you wanted to cite this, you would just grab this and you would put it in your profile and that's completely good to go. We're not looking for APA or MLA citations or anything like that. Step three, we want you to fill out the template with the information that you found and for each section, again, three to four sentences minimum, and when answered, provide examples, explanations, and details that support your thoughts. And you want to include research. So you're going to be doing research for this, but if you don't include research URLs, no citations in this, you will lose a lot of points because there is a particular component after we talk about this um, that I'm going to make sure that you guys are aware of. So this is going to be what you name your document, industry profile, last name, first name. Please don't confuse this with the industry platforms exercise. So some people will upload 3.2 in the place of 3.4 or the opposite. Please don't let that happen to you. 3.4 and 3.2 are separate assignments. Sometimes it's easy to confuse them because the um, industry profile and industry platform, IP, you start, they kind of complete well with one another. It's very easy to mix these up. So be mindful and double check your work. And this is the rubric that we're using to assess you. So we're looking for documentation and analysis of your chosen industry professional. All the work that you did, and then you're going to report it on each of these sections that we have in the template. We're also looking for research of online activity and cited and correctly connected to industry professional. Did you do your research? And did you include your research in your project with links? If you don't do that, that's a whole 15% of your final grade that you simply will not get. And we have students that do this every month. They have a fantastic project but we don't know where they got their research. And I'm like, 15 off, there's not much I can do about that because you didn't give me what I asked for and it's not present. And once you turn it in and it's the day, it, the day after it's due, there's no resubmissions. So please, please, please ask your instructor to look at your work early if you're not sure about your citations. 
but at the very least include them on a section by section basis or at the very end if you just want to list them all at the very end that's totally cool too but do not forget your research guys don't forget your research don't forget your research don't forget your research we also want to look for the complete industry profile. Did you complete parts one and two and do a really good job? Okay, you can nail this 35%. We're looking for the whole package here. So if some of your answers are really, um, like, so documentation, you did your per, your first section, but it's a single sentence, this is where you get dinged because you documented your, your, your analysis, but your analysis was not complete, right? And no, Aaron, none of the citations have to be in APA format. It can just be a simple link. A simple link that we click on. That's all you need. So make sure that you have the full package here. No single sentence answers, no lack of research, because these two categories will affect this category. And then, of course, this last one is writing mechanics. Run spell check. Since you have these in a Word document or in a PowerPoint template, you will see if you've made any errors. And you can also hit that spell check button so that you can double check yourself so that you are maximizing the 13% that you can earn for this activity. All right, guys, so that's all that I have for you. And then let's bring up our example. Uh, T. Lawrence, it's very easy. All you got to do is go to your URL. So I'm going to go to google.com. So let's say I wanted to cite google.com. Just highlight the link, go to your document, paste it, hit spacebar, and we have a link. That's it. That's all we're asking for you to do. Copy and paste from the URL of the website you went to. Put it in your pro, put it in your document. Hit spacebar once, and you have a URL. That's all you got to do. Okay, so let's zoom in here for this example, and this is what we're going to end on tonight. All right, so we can see here at the very top we've got the name of the professional, which is, which is Jeremiah Lee, an associate art director at Cloud, Cloud Imperium Games. So list who you found and their role. Section one. What are some of this person's, uh, what are some noteworthy projects that this person has worked on? And this is going to be, I think this is a concept artist for Cloud Imperium Games. And he's an associate art director, but he began there as a part of the character creation team. And you can see some of his work here in this link and some of his work here in this link for his. Um, so this is how the student chose to answer quite, section one. Very good, very detailed. We can see his research and it gives us an understanding of who this person is. Cool. Section two. What are some interesting personal or professional facts about this person? This individual, this student actually met the industry professional that they're writing about. So he's like, I had the distinct pleasure of spending time with Jeremiah in the past at Star Citizen meetups and events. So if you have a personal anecdote that you can include in your profile, awesome. Maybe this is good for you. Maybe this is something you can apply. Maybe it's not. But if you choose an industry professional and you know them, that should make this problem project very, very easy if you can kind of get a hold of them and ask them a few questions, right? But if it's not someone you know, that's completely cool. And the reason we don't see a citation here for section two is because this is a personal anecdote where this person actually had face-to-face -face, um, first order conversation with this individual. There's no need for a citation because it's something that, well, I met the guy. I'm talking about my experience. I can't cite my own experience, right? So section two is done. Section three, what are some of this person's professional accomplishments? This one also doesn't have a citation, but it's because this individual, probably in conversation from the above section, talked about how he believes that every concept he gets approved is an accomplishment. I believe that's a very healthy and inspiring outlook, right? He also spent a term teaching creative creature design at the Los Angeles Academy of Figurative Art. Since taking up employment, Jeremiah has three promotions. He started here, he went here, and we went, went here, right? So all of this can be found on his LinkedIn profile, and that's linked in section one. You can also glean that from conversations that you've had with the person, if it's someone you know, right? So this student covered their bases, even though they didn't provide a citation for link three, they're like, yo, I got this from his LinkedIn profile, and that's linked right here. So you can do a little bit of creative citations with this, as long as you're covering your bases and showing us where you got your research. All right, and section four, let me kind of move this up here. What social media profiles does this professional use and how are they used? Jeremiah's very actively interacts with the Star Citizen community. Here's this link here for Robert Space Industries. Here's his Twitter, here's his Twitch. And these interactions are often used to inform his work on Star Citizen and the product always reflects that input. He's also an active member of the Arc Station community. And I showed you guys that much, much earlier in our live class today. Having met him in person, I can tell you that he also uses Facebook 
and keep in touch with family and friends. And this is an excellent answer for social media usage. It doesn't have to be this knockdown academic analysis. It can be very touch and go like, oh, I noticed this, I noticed this, I noticed this, and here are the links showing what I found. Very, very simple, very effective. And then the last section here, conclusion and personal thoughts. Why do you think your chosen creative professional has an effective approach for maintaining their online presence? And how might you follow their example? So we're now asking you guys to look inward. You've done all this research, you've compiled your report, you've done some really heavy thinking about what this person does, what they're capable of and how it has informed their professional trajectory. We want you to do this for yourself. And we want you guys to come up with a basic plan. This isn't something to stick with. It's just like, okay, based on my project, I'm feeling this, this, and this. I don't wanna do this, but if I do wanna go down this path, maybe I would try this out. I would also prepare myself in this way. I would also look at other uh, people who are in my industry, check them out and probably do the same process for them as well to kind of have a well-rounded, broad perspective of what it would take to be a professional in my industry at their level, right? So we're looking for you guys to be really introspective. Uh, we want you to analyze yourself, analyze the information that you included in your profile and come up with a basic game plan. It could be bulleted list, it could be a numbered list, it could be a paragraph like you see here, but we just wanna know where your head's at, right? So since I went to work for Cloud Imperium Games as an artist, I feel it's appropriate to model myself after an excellent example of who they weren't working for them. So this student came to the conclusion that Jeremiah Lee, based on his output, based on his outreach, how he uses social media, his professional attitude, meeting him in person. I want to follow in this guy's footsteps because he's doing exactly what I want to do. And here are some of the other things that he's also doing that make him approachable, a respectable person, and make him an admirable professional. So we're looking for a solid paragraph here for you guys to get in your head and think about this. If it happens to be where you just kind of do a word moment where I'm thinking about this and this and this and this, you can edit it later. Don't make this too short. I've seen answers for this question that were this long. Do you think this is enough of a self-analysis for you to really answer this question in detail with a single sentence? I'm going to answer that for you. The answer is no. No, you cannot. First and foremost, I think Jeremiah has done an exemplary job of establishing a professional presence online. That gives us nothing. We need analysis. We need to know what you think, not necessarily what you think about the person you, you covered. We want to know what you're going to do based on the information that you found. And that's what this project is all about. It's about you guys getting introspective, and it's about you guys getting out there to see the lay of the land, who's doing what, what are they capable of, what are they working on, and how can you best position yourself to follow in their footsteps if they are involved in a career or career tra trajectory that you want to be a part of. Right. Okay, that's all that I have for you tonight. I'm going to leave the example up here on the screen. But for those of us watching, those of you watching the recording, I appreciate you making it this far. Let me know if you have any questions if you're working with me this month. And otherwise, have a wonderful afternoon and evening.